start with looking at classes. What's a class? In terms of CSS, a class is a name for a certain type of text which is going to um, obey certain instructions or have certain styles. So let's add a class here. We do it like this. So um, we have a class um, descriptor there and we're going to name our class large. You can call your classes whatever you like. Now instead of our paragraph we're now going to have a dot you always have a full stop which displays or which refers to a class so dot large so now anything I put in these curly brackets is going to refer to this large class and is going to affect the style of that p tag so let's say font size let's make it really big 300% save, refresh. Great. So this large um, p tag is now um, displaying at 300%. You'll notice that we've lost the green because I've taken away the, the p style that we had before. If I want to change um, this p to something else, I can give it the same class if I want to, if I want that one to be large as well. So you can have um, different p's with the same class great or you can change them to something else so you get the idea of hopefully what a class is now an ID is a very similar thing the only difference between classes and IDs is that the tendency is to only use IDs for a single um, a single element within a page so classes you can use many times as I did there with that paragraph and the other paragraph um, the convention is to only use IDs for things that will only appear on the page once so if I use um, this ID of large over here then I shouldn't use it again I should only use IDs once and that particularly comes in when we're using JavaScript later on. You often use a tag, um, an instruction called get element by ID. And so if an element has a specific ID, then we know for sure that that's going to only refer to one element on a page. Whereas if an element only has a class, that could refer to several elements on a page. So classes and IDs we use in the same way with styles, but classes you can have many of the same class on the same page. Whereas with IDs, you only have one. So let's change this ID to green. So I'm going to have um, a green P and I'm going to be sure that there's only uh, one of those on the page. Now instead of a dot, we use a hash symbol to refer to an ID in our style um, CSS language. And then we do the same thing as before. And hopefully you've got the idea by now that color uh, green will make that green. Notice I've put a, um, a semicolon on the end of that line. That's something that you'll see a lot um, in most programming languages. You'll see a semicolon at the end of each line and it just separates out um, the end of each instruction. So let's save that. See how it looks? Great. So we've got our large, um, we've got our green um, peas. Um, you can apply a class and an ID to the same element. Let's have a look at that. There we go. So now we've got large green text. So an ID of green and a class of large. Let's just add one more and see what else we can do with this. So we'll have a third paragraph tag. And I'm going to say the third word in this paragraph is underlined. So how am I going to do that? So far we've only got a way of applying classes and IDs to the whole paragraph. Well there's a handy new HTML tag called span. So the third word in this paragraph is word. And what I'm going to do is surround that by a span tag like that and then I'm going to give that span a certain class. So we'll call it underline. And then up here I'm going to create a new instruction for my underline class and this is going to be text-decoration. 
colon underline. We will go through all of the different CSS instructions, so color, font size, text decoration, and there's also a um, summary document in the docs for this course. So don't worry too much about that at this stage, but um, hopefully you can guess that this is going to give the text a certain decoration and that decoration is going to be underlined. So let's have a look, save that, refresh. Great, so now we've got a specific span tag which um, only affects the particular words within that span. One final thing, we can give a um, particular tag more than one class at the same time. So maybe I want this to be underlined and green. Oh no, I don't want to use green because green is an ID. Um, I'll make it underlined and large instead. So let's save that and have a look. Fantastic. We can even go the whole hog and um, give it three different classes. So let's have, what shall we use as our third instruction? We'll say bolded as well. So we'll have a class of bold. And we'll say font weight bold. There we go, and now we can just add that in. So you just separate your classes with a simple space, save, and that's now bolded as well. So we've looked there at classes and IDs. Classes are something which you can use several times to refer to a paragraph tag or a span or anything else that you want to have similar styles. So in this case, we've got our large class, our underlined class, and our bold class. And that the handy thing about that is that every time we update the large class, that's going to affect everything that has that particular class. So that's this top paragraph, the green paragraph, and also the word there. IDs work in a very similar way. The only restriction is with an ID, you can only have one of them in your page. So you shouldn't have more than one ID at any one time. And finally, we looked at the fact that you can have classes and IDs for the same tag. So this P has an ID and a class as well. And you can also have multiple classes for individual tags, which you can do just by separating them with a space.